Hey, what's up everybody? This is Muth24, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the Spider-Man Noir Collection. This is a reimagining of the Spider-Man storyline set in the 1930s during the Great Depression, and all the noir storylines deal with a different hero or group of heroes in a different specific period of American history. And I think Iron Man's is like the 40s or 50s. He's more of like a uh, sort of a gear grinding suit, almost steampunkish, but not quite. Uh, I know there's one for Wolverine, and there might be one for the X-Men. There's, there's a few other ones that spin off of this, and I don't remember what all they have done with this uh, franchise, if you will, or this, this collection of the noir stuff. Uh, but Spider-Man was one of the first and one of the more well-known ones from the noir series. This collection, I don't know if it's a reprint or what the deal is, uh, but this is a lot smaller in both height and uh, thickness than most collections. I, well, I guess the, the thickness itself isn't isn't too uh, dissimilar to stuff, but the height and uh, width of this collection are more like a, I don't know, like a, like a small novel size than a typical uh, graphic novel, uh, which is odd, but like I said, it might have been a reprint of the original, because I have to imagine that they would have done the standard uh, original release as the same size as, as every other uh, graphic novel trade back out there. So, like I said, it's set in the 1930s. Um, this Peter Parker has uh, a different set of um, items on him, I guess, uh, compared to the classic Spider-Man. And his suit is all black. It's It's got this trench coat. He's got sort of a, like almost like a wool or cotton mask over his head. He has goggles and um, gloves. And he does use more traditional tools and weapons. Like, he has a pistol at one point. Um, and the, the spider that he gets bitten by, I want to say it's called, like, the Spider of Fate or something like that. I, I forget exactly what it's called. Um, but the... Uh, a lot of the characters from the Spider-Man universe do make appearances in this alternate telling of the Spider-Man storyline. You have J. Jonah Jameson, you have uh, Norman Osborn, and the Vulture, and Craven, and you have um, Felicia Hardy, and Aunt May, and just a bunch of like other characters who are, you know, decently important to the overall Spider-Man story. And they fit into this in, in ways that are both interesting, but limit the story to itself. Like, it doesn't get too big for its boots, which is good. Uh, it, it's, it breaks enough from the familiar Spider-Man story so that you're not going to go into this being able to predict everything that's going to happen. But at the same time, it's not going to try and do too much more than the sort of Spider-Man is faced with a problem, has to go take down the guys responsible and sort of piece together a mystery uh, along the way, and then we'll get to the resolution by the end of the last volume or last issue in this, this collected volume here. Uh, there is a second Spider-Man Noir series, and I don't know what it deals with, but to my knowledge of the Noir series, that's the only one to get a sequel. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. This is also one of those stories that ends with... Or sorry, begins with like a, a bookend sort of a thing. Uh, it's going to start with uh, explaining Spider-Man's... Uh, plight late in the uh, story, and then sort of uh, come back to that later on. Got some really cool artwork here. There's a lot of color, uh, even though they're like darker, sort of uh, faded tones for the sake of it conveying the whole uh, uh, Great Depression era. It's really well done. Like It's all kind of mood lighting in, in some of the settings here, uh, but handled really well. The character designs Definitely more gritty and realistic for the sake of the story. Uh, here we have a picture of uh, J. Jonah Jameson there. But they still retain the classic qualities of, of their original versions. There's a few interesting things that they do with some of the supervillains for the sake of not getting too deeply involved with superpowers. Uh, or trying to explain their powers as much. Uh, that are really cool and that I think work very well for this being a more mature uh, audience-oriented work because uh, it is a T-plus 
rated graphic novel, which is in keeping with the uh, Venom storylines and uh, is nice in the sense that it can break away from some of the, the more family-friendly conventions that uh, keep the main Spider-Man story a bit more comic book adventurous, I guess you could say. Uh, not that I don't like Spider-Man in general, but it's definitely written for a broader audience, and uh, both in the dialogue and the things that happen and the characters that see show up from time to time, um, and the whole balancing the, the personal life, the romance and all that, with his superhero identity. Uh, whereas with this, it's just Peter Parker being Spider-Man, dealing with bad guys uh, in this sort of corrupt town. And uh, let me see some other good panels here. Uh, we have some good action shots here. There's Norman ripping up a newspaper. And we have... Uh, like I mentioned here, uh, this is kind of what I'm talking about, like the... Um, what they do with the, the other character, the other like villains, and, and sort of removing them from their super power uh, origins. There is they they make Craven and Vulture both circus freaks, and that Norman sort of employed them uh, as part of his his version of it's not the Sinister Six, but it's basically the closest thing that this has to the Sinister Six. And uh, we still have the whole Ben Parker dying is what propels Peter to become a superhero, or t will take on the role of the Spider-Man, rather. Um, Norman Osborn is still the main villain. Felicia Hardy is still sort of this morally ambiguous aide to Peter Parker, uh, and so on and so forth. There's some really cool concept art here in the back. Lots of black and white with some red here and there. Uh, these are all the variant covers. Uh, character designs for Spider-Man. Uh, a couple different versions of the costume, one with a hat and the other ones without. Uh, one with more like fisheye goggles. Character sketches. And all that. So, it, it's really cool for something different Spider-Man related. Um, I know that they've worked Spider-Man Noir into uh, a couple of the video games. Uh, at least one of them. Maybe more than that. Um, they've worked it into a couple other uh, works in the Marvel Universe. And... I think it's one of those that's going to be like kind of a cult following type things, or maybe it already is, where not that many people follow maybe more like 2099, where it's like not that many people have actually read Spider-Man Noir or Spider-Man 2099 compared to the main Spider-Man stuff, uh, but the people who do really have sort of a fondness for it. Like, yeah, there's certain elements of it that are a bit predictable, uh, a bit tacky maybe even, like I don't think cheesy is the right word for it because it's a more realistic telling of the Spider-Man story, but uh, maybe a bit, you know tacky in the sense that it's, it's pushing the, the, the period piece angle a little bit much, but that it's also really cool and just fun for something different. Like, it takes itself seriously enough that it can break away and do more mature things with the story, but it doesn't take itself too seriously because it does remain grounded in that limited time frame that it has to work with. So, uh, for that sake, I, I really do enjoy... Uh, Spider-Man Noir, and wouldn't mind looking into getting the second one at some point. Um, it's not really high on my priority list, but uh, this was fun. This was interesting for something different, and uh, if you're looking for a quick read that's uh, different from the typical Spider-Man fanfare, or different from the typical Marvel fanfare, uh, to be honest, that I might uh, point you in the direction of Spider-Man Noir, and uh, if you like that one, maybe check out some of the other uh, Noir series. Like, I don't know that much about Wolverine or Iron Man Noir, but... Um, I, I, I suppose if you, if you like this sort of grittier, more specific to a certain era storytelling, might be worth checking out. So with that, I will see you guys next time.